Dan Elman, Mike Beer kicking off the 50 cent late pick five at Gulfstream Park on Pegasus World Cup Saturday. It's the grade three, La Prevoyante. Phillies and mares going a mile and a half on the turf. You can get involved in this pick five, the entire Gulfstream card with a DRF Bets account. New players, double your first deposit up to $250. Learn more at drf.com slash bet. Here's the field for the La Prevoyante and like this entire card at Gulfstream, it is a great betting race and a very competitive one. Yeah, big field here. Um, the mile and a half probably comes into play for some of these horses. There are some lightly raced ones in here. There's just a lot going on. I thought it was a pretty tough race. Lady Paname is the three to one morning line favorite. We haven't seen her in over a year for Chad Brown. Get explicit on the outside. Seven to two's nibbled and graded stakes competition mm -hmm. on the turf in New York and in Kentucky. It's an interesting spot. We take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. Mean Mary's one of those lightly raced horses that you referenced in the open. She's never raced beyond a mile and an eighth, but maybe if she can get loose here, she can get the mile and a half. Uh, I think she has enough pedigree for She's very well bred. Um, she's run well in all three turf starts so far. She's so lightly raced. They just don't know, you know, where her ceiling is. It's not going to be easy for her to step up for the first time and go all the way out to a mile and a half, but I don't see why she couldn't make some noise in here. La Australiana is the number one 20 to one on the morning line. Sticks place two starts back at Gulfstream West against fellow three-year-old fillies, but very light on the speed figures. I mean, listen, this is a race where I feel like you, could, you want to try to make cases for a lot of different horses. She feels like a horse who just might be in a little bit tough here. Simply Beautiful ships in from overseas for trainer Aiden O'Brien. Only one for 15 lifetime, but has kept some pretty good company over there. Multiple group three uh, placed. Yeah. They tried a synthetic surface last time out, and A, I don't really think that's her surface, and B, that trip didn't work out. She no. didn't break well. She's last on the rail for the first mile. They turn into the stretch about 10 wide, and yep. she's picking up horses late. That being said, uh, while I think this distance is okay for her, getting yeah. back to turf, and she classes up very well with these kind of horses, she's just not a winner. Yeah, I mean, I think all those other things are true, though. Um, it, it does sort of feel like she's probably been facing better horses in most of her races. I mean, you go back to that race three back um, at Newmarket. She's in against Fanny Logan. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. That that was a race, actually, she actually ran well in there um, against a really good horse. I, I think she stacks up really well against a field like this, Dan. I, you know, wouldn't fall in love with her at a short price, but I'd definitely be using this horse. And the horse she finished directly ahead of last time out, the sixth place finisher, came back to win a group two at Maidan in the uh, just started Dubai Racing Carnival. We're big fans of Kelsey's Cross yeah, going like out for Pat Biancone. This is a filly that really did some nice work as a lightly raced three-year-old. Third in the Saratoga Oaks in the summer. Then she shipped down to Gulfstream, and that was not the easiest trip in the world. No. She must have been four or five wide throughout, and she gutted it out to win by a neck. Last time out in the QE2. Tough spot, yeah. a race with no pace. Yeah, I mean, she wasn't going to win that race anyway, um, but you know, she didn't really have a fair chance either. You know, we'll see what happens. The mile and a half, I think, has to be a big yeah. concern with her. I don't know how far she really wants to go, but she's a little bit underrated. That's the major worry with me, yeah. especially when you see Trippy on the bottom of this pedigree. Mean Mary, we talked about a little bit. She likes to be forwardly placed. We expect her to make the lead. We turn into the stretch of her recent race at Gulfstream. She's been pressing. She has taken over. She's going to be very game to hold off this horse yeah. on the outside that is resurgent. Her buyers are going the right way. Uh, they tried her once on the dirt at Laurel, but she is a turf horse through and through. Yeah, she's bred to be a turf horse. Uh, this race right here at a mile and eighth, it makes me worry about her yeah. stretching out again there. She had control of that race through the upper stretch, and you can see there at the end, she wasn't really finishing that race off. And now that she's got to stretch all the way out against graded stakes horses, I mean, she could clearly improve again and be tough in here, but I'm a little worried about the distance. Graham Motion trains Mean Mary. He also trains next door neighbor Toriga. Was last time the time for Toriga? 20 to 1 in the Via Borghese. They turn into the stretch. John Velasquez gave her a nice ride, easing her to the outside in the green cap right now in the four path. Toriga's going to do the rest to win this race. Uh, she has races, that matchmaker. I know it was only a three horse mm -hmm. race, but it was a decent performance off of a long layoff. I'm not worried about the distance no. with her. I just wonder why was she 20 to 1 last time out? She only got an 85 buyer, this is tougher. Yeah, I think the loss two back at Aqueduct probably worked against her last time. Yeah. I think that probably got people off of her. Um, I thought she ran just fine winning that race, though. She was wide most of the way in there, and she got it done. And then when you go back to the races prior to the Aqueduct race, I mean, General Ruler, Starship, Jubilee, I'm so fancy. Those horses a lot better than anything she's facing in here. Is she more effective on 
going with a little give in it, though. Maybe. And, I, and that's sort of, that's some a, fair sort point. of a concern. We've seen a lot of her better efforts come on good sure. yielding turf. Lady Panem, well, she's the big name, despite having not raced since November of 2018 in this race, the grade three Long Island. And she's the gray horse for Chad Brown, and she's just going to keep on coming at this mile and three eighths distance. And she will get up, beating two next out winners. The fourth place finisher came back to win two in a row, including this race last year with Bob Buyers of 91 and 96. She has supposedly had all sorts of foot problems mm -hmm. that have kept her away from the races. You don't worry too much about layoffs with no. Chad, but it's such an evenly matched field that does she have such an edge that you want to take a short price? Probably not. That was a pretty nice win there. Just kept coming at the end, would not stop. I mean, the race came back to her a little bit in there, but she still ran well. I mean, it's also worth pointing out that her stateside debut came off of a very, very long layoff. She was ready to go that oh, yeah. day. I suspect she'll be ready to go again. Listen, I'm not dying the better at a short price, but I'll use this horse somewhere. War Cabinet's the number seven for Shug McGahey. We talk about it a lot. A lot of times these McGahey trained horses, they're given time early in their career. They mature around this time at their beginning of their five-year-old campaign. I guess you could argue she's been a little bit of a disappointment throughout her career, but she is going third off the layoff. And unlike Tariga, I think she really likes firm going as compared to good. And she's caught good or yielding mm -hmm. in her last four races. Last time out, that trip didn't work out. She's last on the rail. Jose Ortiz is looking for room. He altered course down to the inside, and she was coming a little bit late. Yeah. The distance is good for her. At 12 to 1 in the morning, she obviously has to run her best race, and she needs some help up front. Yeah, but she might get all those things. It's a, it's a relatively big field here. I, I thought her last race, she... She didn't really have a fair chance in the race. That trip was never really working out for her. I don't think she ran as poorly as it looks. I think your point's well taken that maybe getting back to firm ground could do her some good. Her last two races in New York where she called firm ground, I thought she ran pretty well in both of those races. Latest version is another horse that likes firm ground, and you can sort of pick apart her past performances. Her last race was on dirt. She can't stand up on the dirt, no. so that's a throwout race. Two and three starts back, she raced on firm going. She won both of those races, including this race at Keeneland on October the 20th. And I thought this was a pretty good effort for her latest version. She's taking over the lead right now and she's going to go on with it. You go back to her races, four, five, six back, yielding going. Good efforts, yeah. but not really top efforts. She needs, though, to run faster. Yeah, didn't run poorly in those races at all, but I think you're right that the getting back on firm ground helped her. The other thing that I think you like about a horse like her, yes, she has to improve, and yes, she, she still has to prove it over a mile and a half. You don't really know if she wants to go this far, but I, I feel like she's going to be able to get this distance and she's got a great running style for this race she gets forward in her races but doesn't need the lead this feels to me like the kind of race where trips could be very important and she could get a good one and you're switching the jewel rosario for a very underrated trainer yeah. in vicky oliver you know you're getting a price the nine is raining lemons and i guess she can get the distance just by looking at the lemon drop kid maybe it's more of a middle yeah. distance family on the bottom but i have kind of confidence that michael Matz can get this horse to go a distance of ground whether she's good enough yeah. that might be a different Different story because you look at her uh, career, she's a reformed maiden claimer. I'm concerned that she's just not going to class up with this kind of field. I, you know, she ran okay last time. I guess she really wasn't ever going to win that race trying to come from last. Um, but I, I just wonder, even if her best race, if it's going to be good enough. You know, Get Explicit has had a very underrated career. She's placed several times in graded stakes races, mm -hmm. including the Weya at Saratoga in the summer, a race in which she was kind of last. I like what Ricardo Santana did, trying to grab in the pocket, leaving the back stretch and into the turn, easing out. Gave her every chance to win. She just wasn't good enough I that agree. day. Last time out, she just pulled too hard in a synthetic race at Woodbine. We're going to watch that race right now. And she mid-moved to take the lead going a mile and a 16th and she's just going to get run down. I think a mile and a 16th is just way too short for her. She wants to go longer. She lacks a winning profile, yeah. but she has races. Yeah, she definitely does. She's she's supposed to be a contender in this race. Um, I guess the my feeling with her is as well as she ran in the mile and a half race um, at Saratoga over the summer. I didn't love the way as a field overall. I didn't see her excuse not to win that race. She's one of those horses, Dan, at the end of her three-year-old year, I really felt like she was headed the right way. I was really on her. I felt like she was developing perfectly for a good trainer. And I just didn't think she had a great year last year. Obviously, she went 0 for 9. I know she was great at stakes placed a couple of times. I just didn't think she had a great year last yeah, year. It'll be interesting to see what she can work out. She has plenty of time, but it's a three-turn race breaking from the far outside post. Top pick time for the grade three La Prevoyante, kicking off a 50-cent pick five at Gulfstream. 
I'm going to give War Cabinet one chance, hoping that this is the latest example of a shug horse getting good at this point in her career, getting firm ground. She has been a little bit of a disappointment, but like you, I didn't think she had a fair chance last time. Yeah, I just think the trip didn't work out. I'm going to use that horse, too, but I'm going to put latest version yeah. on top. I'm going to bet a few dollars on this horse. I, again, I feel like this is the kind of race where trips are just going to be paramount. And she really has the running style to get a good one. In and here. she does have that tactical speed where she can sit second or third. And if you think she can get the distance from a pedigree standpoint, she should be able to yeah. do it. She should be very dangerous turning into the lane. So we're both going to go with some prices in here. 20 to 1 on the morning line for Mike's topic. 12 to 1 for mine. In the grade 3, La Prevoyante. Race 8 at Gulfstream on Pegasus World Cup Saturday is an approximate post of 3.03 Eastern. Good luck.